Yeah, well, welcome everyone. Uh, Paul Savas, Clackamas County Commissioner, co-chair. Um, before I turn it over to Mayor Hodson, I just wanna say um, you all heard about the, um, the pause the governor um, put in place. So we're all kind of excited by that. It gives us some time. Um, as I'm telling people, uh, everyone's saying, well, congratulations, you know, have a glass of champagne. Well, for me, not quite. Uh, I'm, I've still got my foot solidly on the throttle and I'm not gonna let up and I'm not gonna be complacent and we need to keep uh, uh, fighting forward um, on this. Um, and hopefully we'll get to a good place, but it's good news nonetheless. And I wanna just give everyone here and everyone who's not here, who was part of this uh, absolute credit for your help and assistance in making this happen. It was a huge team effort. And I really appreciate the fact that it really has brought us together in a way I haven't seen C4 come together in my history of since formation of C4. This is something that's been very galvanizing. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, everyone uh, helped considerably. So with that, Mayor Hodson, it's all yours. Well, Groovy, I will echo those thoughts as well. I, this really was a group effort uh, for many of us and uh, you know, it goes to show how much can get accomplished actually when you uh, coalesce as a team and um, really keep, uh, I guess, really keep beating on the issue as best you can. And so uh, we'll take a pause, but much like Commissioner Savas has said, uh, we still have work to do. So, uh, but thank you all for that. Uh, we'll get us started here, the Pledge of Allegiance. If uh, our triangle will throw up a flag there for us and we'll Get that going. I like it, Trent. There we go. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. So, Welcome and introductions. As he said, he's Commissioner Savas, co-chair. And as I will say, I'm Brian Hodson, Mayor of, the, of Canby, and the other co-chair. Um, we've got a couple of us here this evening, so I'll we'll just run down the list. Uh, Mr. Myers. Evening, everyone. Martin Myers, Redland Biola Fishers Mill, CPO, and also the C4 rep for the rural and unincorporated areas. Thank you. Good to be here. Thank you, sir. Mr. Silva. Silva representing fire districts, presently with SDK. Perfect, welcome. Um, Mayor Milch. Michael Milch, Mayor of Gladstone. Thank you, sir. Mr. Cernak. Uh, Kenny Cernak, Hamlet Rep. Welcome, sir. Mr. Sherman. Hello, Brett Sherman, City Councilor Happy Valley. I also am co-chair of the C4 Metro Subcommittee and on the C4 Executive Committee. Mayor Buck, we know, is not here tonight. I don't think I saw... Uh, see, Councilor Savage-Jord is not here. Mr. Kaiser. You're here. Okay. Well, no, there we Mayor go. Kaiser, uh, the Mayor Kaiser with Malala. Uh, sorry, the space bar wasn't uh, releasing the mute for some reason. So I am here and present. Thank you. Perfect. Let's see. I didn't see Councillor McLean at all. Let's, Mr. Pullman, Mr. Gornick. Hello, all. My, my space bar mute was not working either for some reason. Uh, Paul Gornick from Oak Lodge Water Services representing sanitary districts. Perfect. And just jumping on, uh, Councillor Pratt. Hi, Councillor Pratt, Tualatin. Perfect. Miss French. Hi, Sherry French, Clackamas River Water, uh, water representative, C4 Impact. Excellent. 
And I don't see Mayor Rory or Mayor Fitzgerald, um, but we also have Mr. Brashear. Yes, good evening, everyone. Dwight Brashear, Transit Director for uh, Wilsonville Smart, representing urban public transit providers. And I like the hat, sir. Thank you very much. Mr. Wood. You, Todd, you're unmuted, but we can't hear you. Nope. How about that one? There we go. <laughs> I have like three of them, so I just have to pick the right one. Uh, let's see, Todd Wood, Transit Director, Canby Area Transit, and I am representing the rural transit providers. Perfect, sounds good. Um, Councilor Lewis. Christine Lewis, Metro Council District 2, a lot of Clackamas, and I am delighted to see all of you tonight. Excellent. Mr. West. Clackamas County Commissioner Ben West, uh, 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 signing on in from uh, Wilsonville here. Uh, happy to be here tonight with all of you guys. You and last but not least, Mr. Gronke. Ed Gronke, God protect us from the technology. I'm, I'm the uh, Clackamas County Citizens Rep to Impact. Well, it is the National Day of Prayer, and so uh, Ed will take that as our uh, prayer piece for today. The technology does not overtake us. Um, okay. Well, we have a pretty heavy-duty agenda, and um, something just to let you all know that uh, we did extend an invitation, and by we, I mean um, county staff, to um, Representative Bynum, who is will be joining us later this evening about eight o'clock. So we'll probably, whatever topic we're on, we'll probably take a hiatus from that and allow her to kind of tune in and give us some information on the semiconductor piece and what's going on with that and uh, and what that's gonna look like hopefully for Clackamas County. So uh, Trent, did I cover that pretty well? Yes, very good. Okay. Um, well, on our agenda is we get to meet our new Clackamas County Economic Development Manager, uh, Laura Edmonds. And Trent, I think you're gonna give us a lowdown and Laura's gonna razzle dazzle us with silver bullets to further the economic development of Clackamas County. Come on now, I told her, I told her uh, no no big tasks today. Oh. So oh. Silver, she left the silver bullets at home, I promise. Okay. Uh, actually, I'm really pleased to introduce Laura uh, who's coming over to Clackamas County. Uh, from the North Clackamas Chamber of Commerce. So many of you probably already know Laura, but in her new role, uh, a lot of things are changing here at Clackamas County. And so uh, she has uh, a lot of work ahead of her, a commission that is really excited about the future of economic development here in Clackamas County. And that means good partnerships uh, with all of our cities. And the C4 table is a great place to, to do that. So the C4 Executive Committee uh, earlier this month said, you know, we want to have or I guess last month, said we want to have a, a robust conversation about economic development. That's been a topic uh, that y'all wanted to have for a couple of months now. And so we thought, what better way to start that with uh, a visit from our new economic development manager? Uh, some round robin questions uh, shortly after that, just to hear from everybody here about what's going on and what are some of the challenges and opportunities. That way, Laura can listen into some of those things. And we have it recorded here, of course. Uh, invite uh, Representative Bynum into uh, the conversation to share what she's learned as the co-chair of the semiconductor uh, committee at the legislature and just start getting this information for what will probably be a first conversation about economic development uh, for C4 moving forward. And so with that, I'm happy to just pass it over to Laura for a quick hello. And then it's mostly um, hearing from the rest of you C4 members about economic development ideas. Laura, it's yours. So good evening. I'm very honored to be here. So it's kind of exciting. I recognize half, at least half of you, if not more, um, some great familiar faces. So I feel a little bit more comfortable than at first that I that I was going to. So appreciate the opportunity to be here. 
Um, and I'm very excited. I've met some of you and some of your teams already to talk about your individual economic development needs. And I look forward to visiting with more of you one-on-one -on -one as um, my team uh, begins the evolution of our economic development strategic plan. And uh, looking forward, very forward to engaging with most of you, if not all of you, um, sometime in the near future. So thanks. Thanks for letting me be here. I'll be the fly on the wall um, and just absorbing everything like a little sponge. So thank you so much. Honor. We're glad to have you here, Laura. And uh, I know you're going to have a full slate of, you know, meeting with a lot of the different cities and economic development directors uh, throughout the county. So uh, it'll be it'll be great to see it come by our cities and have some conversation. So, um, well, as Trent and Laura have alluded to, our next agenda item, we'll get into economic development, but I was remiss in skipping over approving the minutes for the April 6th meeting of 2023. So if we could do that real quick, I'd really appreciate it. And so would Trent. So moved. Thank you, sir. Second. I saw Kenny's hand and heard Valerie's voice, so we're good there. That's covered. Any discussion or questions? All right. Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Anyone, Aye. anyone opposed? All right. We took care of housekeeping. Thank you all. All right. So our economic development conversation and so priorities. Um, yeah, so let's have at it. Let's who wants to go first and kind of talk about what's going on in, in your cities? What are you working on? What do you need support from each other? Clackamas County. Don't all jump in at once. Thank you, Councillor Sherman. Sure thing. Let's let's go. Let's hit it. Um Let's see. So I think uh, some of the things that uh, that we were planning on talking about. So, so first of all, it's kind of the uh, some of the the opportunities we have uh, here in Happy Valley. I think um, you know first and foremost we have land, <laughs> we have room to grow, and uh, and that is uh, certainly a, a benefit. Um, you know, if you look out toward like the Pleasant Valley North Carver area, down toward uh, the Rock Creek area, um, those are certainly some some robust areas. And you know, kind of combine that with uh, we have a, a, a strong urban renewal agency, which, which provides us some, some funding opportunity. We have a low uh, permanent tax rate um, uh, for the city, which, which also is, is a positive. Um, we're in the process of uh, doing the work on creating a new downtown, which is going to give us a, a lot of opportunity as we kind of create that new structure. Um, and also in the process of uh, investigating a, uh, uh, vertical housing development zone. So I think uh, those are all positive. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention that we also have a spectacular city staff um, and really strong processes. Those those do make things work, uh, you know, much more smoothly. And I think you know, so so for us, then the the barriers on the other side of that equation, the things that make it more difficult, are, are you know, obviously money related. The cost of infrastructure is is you know really problematic. Um, you know, especially for the um, when you're building on kind of the edge of the urban area where where there's a lot of significant public facilities are, that are going to be required. Um, that, that's that's very difficult. Um, you know, just the the typical market forces that we're seeing right now. Um, you know, cost of labor, cost of materials, uh, cost of capital. Th those are all uh, make it make it very difficult. Um, you know the the lack of economic incentives to to allow us to to um, expand these areas. I think you know are, are potentially problematic. Um, maybe some short term, you know, dealing with short term rentals, figuring out how to how to properly tax that and make that um, a more robust revenue stream. Also, so I'll I'll stop there. I, I don't know. Are we planning on kind of going through a, a laundry list, or are we going to kind of like deal with the pros and cons right now and and I touch on other things later on. How much? How much do you want me to talk tonight? <laughs> well, this no, is I, kind of the meeting. Sorry to jump in front of you, Coach. Here. This is kind of the meeting. So I think anything that you're looking to share right now is is good. And then I think there are some questions that we can that are more discussion based right now. So 
every city I expect will be different. Every member here could could probably ebb and flow or talk about similar things, but different within your unique communities. Um, I wouldn't limit it to anything. Okay. You know, probably so, not a so ten then, minute. Probably not a ten minute update, but you don't have to keep it to just, one minute. Just, yeah, fifteen, twenty, half an hour would be good. Um, you know, so probably for for us in Happy Valley, the the big one is uh, transportation facilities. That's that's the biggie. Um, the transportation improvements. You know, a, a lot of the issues with some of the uh, the changes to um, uh, you know housing housing regs and how they deal or how transportation deals with that so for us the the big the big one to overcome would be um uh c2c and sunrise corridor um you know those are like billion dollar plus um projects but they they would really make or break the potential of those um those uh areas and so i think that's that's a big one for us so i'll uh i'll leave it there for now thank you so Thanks for our acronym purposes, C to oh, C sorry. is the Clackamas to Columbia corridor. It's basically 172nd. Is that right? All the way up to 80, um, Highway 84? Pretty much all the way up to 84, correct. And okay. then the Sunrise Corridor is the east-west connection from what is currently already there up through uh, 122nd. And that would be extending that out to 172nd. Thank you. So, Councilor Sherman, just a question on my end. You, you talked about the vertical housing piece that Happy Valley is kind of looking at here. Is that are you guys looking at that as part of your, you know, down your future downtown development, or are there areas that you've identified to do those in? And are you getting some like community support for going vertical? Um, so the answer to the first part of that is yes and yes. The answer to the second is to be determined. So at this point, um, we so we are looking at doing that in relation to the downtown area. That is, that is definitely part of it. We also have uh, a pending project on the the west side of the city um, that you know butted up against uh, 205 that could really benefit from that. They could make it a, a you know a much more robust area. And uh, make it more affordable for the builder to create there if we if we put a zone like that in place. Um, as far as uh, public outreach at this point, you know it it it's it's all going to be within the context of the area where it's built. And so um, if you're looking at like uh, the Eagles Landing area on 205, where you already have some taller buildings, it's kind of in that context of the area. It probably fits in really well. If you're looking at a new downtown for Happy Valley that is in an area that right now is currently pretty residential, and you start throwing in six-story buildings, um, you, you may have you know you may have some pushback. So we we haven't crossed that bridge yet. And I see Commissioner Savage, you have a question. Yeah, thank you, Council Sherman. Um, you mentioned STRs or short-term rentals. My question is, are you doing that for the purpose of regulating or for the purpose of revenue generation or both? Uh, both. I mean, primarily, primarily regulating that that's kind of first and foremost, but also, um, you know, it, there's the potential for a, uh, an expansion of that as we add um, job opportunities and, and, you know, theoretically pick up tourism in the area as well. And so it's, it's really kind of a two pronged approach at it. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Gronke, did you, you wanted to go next or did you have a question for Councilor Sherman? Actually, I have a question for, uh, Laura, Laura, it's great to see you again. We miss you at the chamber. My question is, what do you see as a primary role of the county in economic development? I, Laura, I think that he was directing that right at you. I was trying to track him there because he, he, different things. Um, the primary role, well, loaded question, but basically ICR, our role is being a very collaborative and support supportive yeah. organization uh, countywide. And a lot of the conversations we're having right now with the different cities, your teams like Happy Valley and, and I mean, just everywhere we've been so far um, is there. It's just really getting to understand that's why I'm here tonight for this conversation. Just really want to understand some of the pain points, obstacles, and opportunities that there are. So as my team and I start establishing our strategic plan, we're going to be taking a very collaborative approach, looking at, you know, making sure we're focusing on unincorporated in all the cities throughout Clackamas County. So ours is going to really lead to a robust um, 
it's it's about business retention, expansion, and job growth is is going to be some key priorities for us. Um, so, and of course, there'll be more, but that's really going to be the key priorities. Thank you, Ed. Good to see you, by the way. Great. Uh, Carol Carolyn, question or you want to present? Um, I'm ready to present. Can Go you hear me it. okay? Yes, great. Uh, so I'm Carolyn Berry. I'm with the city of Wilsonville. I'm on the council. And uh, Julie Fitzgerald, our mayor, mayor, who's on the panel here for C4, she had another meeting, so I'm filling in for her. Um, so I'm glad to see everybody here. Uh, for the city of Wilsonville, our economic priorities, we have a small list. We're looking to facilitate uh, development in the Coffee Creek RSIA in terms of aggregating lots and install infrastructure. Uh, we want to advance land use and transportation infrastructure planning in the Basalt Creek industrial area. Both of those areas are on the northwest side of Wilsonville, uh, kind of between Wilsonville and Tualatin. Uh, we're looking to explore feasibility of a new tax increment and an urban renewal finance district to support the redevelopment of our town center. And we want to convene a child care provider consortium to identify the local challenges and opportunities to improve workforce availability. And our last priority is to connect the K-12 with higher education with the local industry for workforce development opportunities. Excellent. Um, sounds like a, a lot in the big items, but a lot in there for Wilsonville. I know that Coffee Creek area has been, uh, that is a huge area. And so uh, in conversation, Frog Pond area I know is, uh, underway and, and or soon to be and yeah a tremendous amount um Carolyn in I know there was a tremendous amount of focus um for Wilsonville on the some industrial development is that still kind of a, a focus there for Wilsonville and how mm -hmm. is that shaping up with you know more growth that's kind of going around Wilsonville as kind of Tualatin kind of creeps south and and whatnot Right. So Wilsonville is a strong proponent of planning. So we do have a master plan to uh, build up the industrial area. Right now, up by Coffee Creek, there's a, a there's a whole lot of land that has been identified, but they're in smaller increments. So we're looking at different economic ways so that we can uh, cons consolidate those lots and make it easier for industries to come in. So um, we're at the beginning stages, but I think that we're going to do a great job. No, perfect. And so uh, kind of just using the the questions there from the packet a little bit, Carolyn, and put, put you a little bit more on the spot. Uh, transportation needs for all this growth and development. Do you, do you anticipate having any or uh, Wilsonville's all set and there's enough roads and smart buses to go around. Well, luckily we have Dwight on this call and he can probably help us with that. Dwight, you want to step in? Oh, that's absolutely. Thank you, Councillor. Um, yeah, smart is uh, in the process right now. Uh, we hope to have the our updated transit master plan before the council uh, in June, I believe, uh, for adoption. And that'll guide us for the next five years. It does include Coffee Creek, uh, Basalt Creek, Frog Pond. So we are expanding uh, SMART into those areas if the uh, transit master plan is, is adopted. And I would also be remiss if I didn't point out uh, to Laura that um, Wilsonville and Canby and Malala all have their own uh, transit systems. And uh, we, we are all tied together, uh, kind of a single garment of destiny as Dr. King used to talk about. And so uh, the three cities, and we're trying to add Sandy as well to that, 
uh, will all be tied together by transit and it's multi-modal transit because in Wilsonville, we also have heavy uh, uh, rail, uh, customer rail there in, uh, in Wilsonville. So you can go from Canby or Malala, uh, you can make it all the way to Wilsonville pretty much for a dollar and, uh, and ride the train uh, if you need to. So um, transit in uh, Clackamas County is on the move. Um, and I think it's, you know, Washington County can't boast what we have, neither can Multnomah. Uh, we have uh, five, six maybe transit systems in Clackamas County, and they're all working uh, working together in harmony. So um, I'm very proud of that. So yeah, yeah, we're on the move. Well, I appreciate you bringing that up, Dwight, about just the three cities connected and whatnot. It was, it was interesting leaving Canby this morning, and I was sitting at a stoplight, and I had a um, South Clackamas Transit District bus coming through the intersection one way and then a Canby area transit bus through the same intersection about the same time uh, going the other direction. And so, um, no, it'd be great. I know that that's been something that we've all talked about here at C4 is that, you know, is that something that we continue to drive and push forward is that uh, the independent transit piece for some of our communities. So thank you for that. Um, Carolyn, um, from an the industrial standpoint is Wilsonville focusing on kind of the what kind of industry is Wilsonville recruiting or trying to go after from an economic development standpoint? Uh, we're looking for industrial um, enterprises that have high paying wages. Um, so that's you know, that's the general uh, gist of it. Um, I want to go back to the transportation thing and just kind of give a shout out for Dwight that in Wilsonville, we do have the smart transit and it runs in the black. So it does a great job with the budgeting. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yes. So does that mean that Dwight is up for grabs for Sandy or other cities that are looking to? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> All right, I'm just throwing that out there. You know, you got Walton on here. I'm just saying, you know, it could be. All right. Well, thank you, Carolyn, and welcome to. Uh, thanks for being here tonight. Thank uh, you, Miss Pratt. Did you have a question, or were you ready to present? Ready to present. All right. Perfect. Okay. Well, I guess I'll go start with the Wilsonville part. We've separated, determine what part of Basalt Creek is going to be Wilsonville and Tualatin, and it has a lot to do with um, what runs in sewers and that it's easier to run downhill. So that was a lot of the basis for that decision. Um, we have, um, part of it is going to be residential, and that part's pretty much planned out. There's a few pieces that aren't. And then off 124th, um, we're going to go industrial and I, I um, the question what industries do you want in our town we more don't want distribution centers because of our location distribution centers all want to come in here and um, we have a little bit of a traffic back up here already so we don't need and we have Amazon here already and another big distribution center so that's what we don't want what we do want um, we have, I think it's 96% of the people that live here, we don't work here. So we're trying to um, bring in jobs that would allow people to afford to live in our town. That being said, um, and then also our downtown core area, we do have an ur ur urban renewal district and we're working on that. And um, we're looking to do more multimodal and you know, more dense housing, to put a more dense housing there. And hopefully we'll have transit there. TriMet's um, getting rid of our direct line to downtown. They're gonna have put in another line that's gonna have a thousand stops, but it'll get you there. Um, we do have ride share in our town, which um, not quite as good as smart, but it it's getting there. <laughs> so, and, but our big need for Clackamas County, I think is the transit and also, um, in the future, who knows what will happen with the Stafford area. That would be, um, you know, we would like to expand there eventually, but we also don't have any funds for the infrastructure. So, 
sorry, I was answering uh, uh, Commissioner West's question. The so the can you speak to that that aspect, uh, Valerie, about the transportation piece? I know there's you know between Sherwood to Walton that whole. Um, I often will take the back roads from Wilsonville to um, Beaverton because I five is a, a, a mess and so is two seventeen. Um, and I mean, it's a, it appears to be such a wide open area back in there. Um, but to your point about distribution centers and the transportation glitch that, that creates, um, what, I guess, what is the future for that? Even with, uh, you're talking about the amount of people that come to Tualatin to work, but don't necessarily live there. What's kind of the strategy that Tualatin's taking a look at to try to move that tide a different direction or embrace it in other ways? Mostly it's, um, I think it's kind of a, a big challenge because um, as everybody knows, housing prices have gone up and it's pretty unaffordable for, you know, I think like most cities we have, um, there's, it seems like there's no middle middle class people. There's people that make probably under 40,000 and people that make over 100,000 and there's no in between. and. Um, to buy a house in Tualatin to now, you probably have to make well over a hundred thousand. So it's it's tough to look to find those kind of jobs for our community. But like we have Lamb Research, and they're great. They're semiconductor, and they pay really well. But um, so that's where we're trying to bring in more um, what we call workforce housing and that denser housing to help with that. Um, and I, I want to say we do have smart comes to our town because we have that bus on shoulder program that goes to Bridgeport and it's awesome. <laughs> Great. Uh, Commissioner West, I know you have a question. Valerie, thanks for the segue to my question. Um, and this may be a question for Valerie, Dwight, and Caroline. Um, uh, I'm I'm curious. I, I was curious to under to, to see how that kind of innovative pilot program for the bus on the shoulder is working, um, and then uh, and in it and if that has helped spur any economic development, being able to do that. And then my other question is, um, are, what is the tran for? And this might be for more of the city of Wilsonville. Is what is the transit on West been like? Have we seen an increase of ridership? Um, I know it has some limited access when you get into Portland for economic development. Some of the limitation has been at least on this side of the county in Wilsonville is the ability just to get to work and to use mass transit as a viable option. Um, so like I work at OHSU a couple of days a month still. I could never use our mass transit from Clackamas County to get there in a timely and reasonable fashion if there's any movement along those lines either. I'll speak to West first. Our West line, um, you know, it's on the rails and the rails have control so it only operates during you know peak um i guess for business people hours you know seven to nine in the morning then maybe four to seven at night so and we've asked them you know be great if because it ties into the max there in beaverton so it'd be great if you could hop into downtown or whatever um trimet was actually looking at that they decided that the ridership's not high enough so they axed that program and looking into that so that's um, not an option. As far, um, I don't know, Dwight might have to speak to the um, bus on shoulder program. I know our um, um, Bridgeport area is still um, thriving and doing very well. Yeah, yeah and I can jump in on the <clears throat> bus on shoulder. Um, working with ODOT, uh, we provide monthly and then quarterly uh, reports. We meet with them regularly. Uh, the bus on shoulder project has been a tremendous success, so much so that um, Chariots uh, Salem has uh, approached uh, us uh, and ODOT about uh, extending uh, some of their service up to Bridgeport using, as long as they can use that shoulder, uh, they would be interested in doing that. Also, uh, in meeting with ODOT, our next uh, desire or plan is the I-205. That's the bus you see uh, on my shoulder there. Um, and ODOT has uh, given us, uh, uh, you know, the preliminary uh, green light to study uh, that particular corridor. And we would uh, use the shoulder uh, from Stafford 
all the way to uh, Oregon City, and then from Oregon City to Clackamas, uh, we would use the inside uh, median um, lane, which is uh, which will give us even better access uh, along that uh, that I two hundred five corridor between uh, Oregon City and Clackamas Town Center. So the answer, uh, Commissioner, to the question about bus on shoulder is it's probably in my career one of the most successful things that that I've done and one of the easiest. Uh, ODOT was uh, just uh, incredible to work with on that particular project. Just I can't say enough nice things about them and they uh, they trust us uh, with the I-205 project as well. And I, and I hope to get that off the ground uh, in the not too distant future. That's fantastic. Thank you so much for that update. You're welcome. Uh, Councilor Pratt, thank you for giving us the update there on Tualatin. Um, Mayor Kaiser. Yeah, um, as a lot of you know, Malala used to be a logging town and we have some properties here that are um, used to be logging mills. And so we've had a couple interested parties in buying this property, this one property in particular, and would have brought some great jobs here. But the one obstacle they've come up against is PGE wants close to $10 million to upgrade the power to them. And that's of course out of their budget. Um, and then the other issue we have right through town is our town sits right on the axis of ODOT. Um, we have 211 and 213 that goes through town. So a lot of times when a business wants to come in, they are looking for access to get on, you know, they want their business right on to, you know, on 211 because location's everything and ODOT's like wanting them to empty their pocketbooks or saying they can only have a one way in and one way out to get into these businesses. And we, you know, between the, the old mill and uh, we've had one business walk away from a location on 211 just because of the location issues. Um, and, you know, we're looking, we've, we've made a big turnaround. I mean, we used to be a sleeper community and we've had a lot of retail pop up with us but that one main area that we can get a lot of good business and jobs in um it's just they they're a oh, pge and they want so much upgrade done that it doesn't it's not cost affordable for businesses i think it was um dancing which they make the barbecue grills they wanted to put a pellet manufacturing place right out at the old mill and once they heard how much to get enough power into that facility, they said, no way, you know, we, we can open somewhere a lot cheaper. So that's kind of the issues we're dealing with with Malala. Um, Scott, um, I know you and I have had a couple of conversations as well about just some of those challenges with the highways that kind of make the uh, ingress and egress of Malala a challenge, especially when you talk about development you talk about just the added pieces for just uh, mobility issues. So when you talk about bike and ped, um, what in what ways can, um, I guess, as an area much like Estacada, much like Sandy, that are growing um, from a, I guess, that transportation angle of things, what, what do you guys need from in terms of support from the group or from Clackamas County? Maybe ways of just finding businesses that want to be in, in the area. Um, you know, I think a lot of it might come down to is just pressure on ODOT to come in and resurface Highway 211. You know, a lot of businesses drive through our town and, you know, the, it, it took me a month of emails just to get them to do rut resurfacing last year. And it's already down to having potholes and being rough again. Um, our city's pretty well known for if you have an open coffee cup in your car, you're going to wear it. Um, and as far as that mill, I'm too new of a mayor to honestly say what we can do. I don't know how to battle PGE um, to get the upgrades so we can actually get some industrial into our city. But, you know, I'm all ears for ideas. No, that's exactly kind of that the purpose here is I know there's some of us in this group and that are here currently and not here that have had to battle those kind of fronts in their cities. So any tips on dealing with PGE 
Um, please send them uh, to Mayor Kaiser's direction. Um, I think that I had another question, Scott, but I'll, it'll come back to me. Um, so I'll take a moment and just talk a little bit about Gamby and where we're at with things um, right now. So we've got two industrial parks, the north side um, industrial park, I guess northwest is, is, I mean, it's built out. So there's about, it wasn't a huge area to begin with, but it was about, um, we had about four or five businesses out there that really um, make that um, what it is. And so we've got uh, Wilson Construction, which does the high power lines um, that they travel pretty much all over the world doing those. Um, and then a couple of other manufacturers. The big piece was the Canby Pioneer Industrial Park. Um, we are moving through, uh, moving, still moving quite a bit of dirt out there. Um, we recently sold off um, our probably our last big parcel and by big parcel, meaning um, I think it was 30, 40, 50 acres. Um, and that was for the Amazon um, distribution center that's been put on hold. Um, they still have the dirt. They just nothing moving in terms of that right now. Uh, where that leaves can be is a number of, uh, well, before I get there, um, the, uh, OLCC warehouse is going to be built there in Canby. So that's going to be underway here soon. And then uh, Dragonberry Produce, which was one of the first companies to come out to Canby and um, in our industrial park, um, they have expanded uh, once and now are expanding again. Um, and so that's really quite amazing to see. And that's one of the one like Tualatin, we have kind of become a little bit of a distribution area with uh, Columbia Distribution there and um, well, Dragonberry Produce, um, Stanage Furniture does manufacturing and distributes out of Canby now and uh, Caruso Produce, which so a lot of those businesses were relocates from kind of landlocked areas. So Caruso Produce was landlocked in Tualatin and looking for, you know, again, a little bit better in and out um, and warehouse space. Same with Columbia out of, um, out of coming out of Portland. And so we've had, we've been very fortunate in a couple of those, those regards. Um, housing um, definitely is a hot topic. So all in all, Canby's, um, we've just had, we've just seen a tremendous amount of growth over the last 10 years, um, much like all of us in Clackamas County. And so what we're looking at now is um, our comp plan. So we've just completed our, our own economic development analysis uh, in preparation of that. And then we've also completed our housing needs assessment um, with that as well. Um, so our big piece is gonna be the, uh, the UGB expansion fight that will probably come up over, I would say in the next 10 years. Um, so that'll be um, pretty major. And then the, um, yeah, what's next for our industrial park? And you know, we have, we have um, caviar and champagne dreams and, and beer budget. Um, and uh, we know that we, we can't do the things that we wanna do strictly on the house, uh, on single family homes. And we need the industrial park to help continue to grow and, and help us drive that economic development. Um, are you, uh, Urban Renewal District um, is currently set to sunset here in 25, 26. And so, you know, that's gonna be a big conversation piece. Um, does, it, does it sunset? Do we um, revamp it? Do we, what does that look like? Um, do we create smaller, um, smaller districts or is it using enterprise zones and all those kinds of things so those are those big topics that we're going to be having conversations about coming up um transportation uh is an issue uh in canby 99e is our main thoroughfare and it does not handle the capacity now and so it'll continue to be constrained in the future um, we are in the process of 
adding um, another road uh, in and out of our industrial park because of the growth there, um, which will be a great addition to the industrial park. And with that, it opens up a lot of land for um, both light industrial development and then uh, housing on a multitude of levels. So mixed use, single family, um, some of the, you know, we're looking at some of the vertical pieces more in our downtown core. Um, and then infrastructure doesn't, isn't too big of a challenge for Canby. I mean, the cost of it, the growth of it, um, I'd say the, you know, we're very fortunate in that um, we have a public utility. Um, so it's owned by the citizens of Canby. And so that, that's really been an enticing um, angle um, to be able to attract businesses to the industrial park because um, we're not um, really, we use PGE uh, um, lines for transmission, but um, you know, it's all locally set up um, at least in the city limits by Camp Utility. So that's been uh, a big win for us to be able to develop the way that we have. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, state, regional, federal funding. Um, well, as we look at part of our comp plan, it's gonna be how do we develop the, the road infrastructure? Where Where is, is it a bypass around Canby? Is it beefing up other um, other roads to make them more um, more like a parkway than a than a street? So those are those are going to be hot topics in Canby from a from a growth angle and and truly an economic development piece. That's Canby. Mayor Milch, let's talk about Gladstone. Thank you. Uh, we have a lot similar to some of what has been said by other people. Um, we're trying to develop a stronger uh, uh, economic ecosystem for our community uh, rooted in some of our local strengths. Uh, right now, that includes a school system that's really working on um, uh, career and technical education programs that I think will provide good opportunities for young people, uh, those who want to stay here or those who want to move on to somewhere else but have uh, job skills and not a lot of uh, student debt. Um, we, uh, I got a letter from a citizen who described us as a bedroom community of Oregon City, uh, but in reality, most of our uh, workers, uh, like like some of you others uh, have just have said, are people who um, live here and work elsewhere. And a lot of our jobs are people who live elsewhere and work here. We only have about three percent of our overall jobs are held by citizens of Gladstone who work in Gladstone. Uh, so, uh, you know, some of what we're looking to do, um, it, I, I'm, I'm pleased to hear the conversation around transportation. Um, I'm very happy that uh, our state representative, Anessa Hartman, and our Metro representative, uh, Christine Lewis, will both be on that new subcommittee looking at the whole tolling situation. And uh, my hope is that that will be a very a uh, broad holistic look at transportation needs regionally. Uh, those of you and those of us who have uh, traded sector economy uh, concerns, uh, you know, the transportation of those products is gonna be very important uh, to the, uh, on the freeway system. And, um, but at, at a more local level, uh, part of the problem, part of the reason we were so opposed to tolling uh, as, a, as a group here was the lack of, um, transit in some of the areas uh, that were most affected. And uh, we are in the area served by TriMet, um, but a lot of our people uh, trans travel up and down that, uh, that 99E corridor toward the Portland area. And uh, uh, there was a good conversation at the uh, Clackamas State of the County lunch a couple of weeks ago uh, on transit with the commissioners all uh, pretty much underscoring the importance of um, uh, the the regional transport, the, some of the groups that you represent here, uh, the the rural communities that have their own transit systems. And uh, excuse me, sorry, that landline still rings sometimes. Um, also, we have. Uh, 
But the part of the need on that 99E corridor is to get some of that east and west first mile, last mile uh, connection so that the, um, the routes that run there could serve more people and maybe get a, big, a bigger boost in ridership, uh, which would help TriMet and it would help the communities uh, quite a bit. Uh, I've been reading a lot about on-demand micro transit in some other communities and wondering whether some of those little shuttle buses and and vans and other things uh, running from uh, the suburbs or the, the residential areas uh, surrounding 99E uh, north of us in um, Oak Grove and Jennings Lodge and on up uh, would, would help to make that system work better for, for the regional economy. Uh, we need to be regionally connected in Gladstone we're only about two and a half square miles. Our, our housing and needs analysis says that we only have about 1% uh, of our total land uh, available for housing. So what we're seeing in terms of housing growth is going to be infill development. Uh, we're seeing a lot more applications now for people to do accessory dwelling units in their own homes, in existing homes. And uh, we have some older homes that will probably be torn down and replaced with something different. We've also adopted a lot of uh, regulations for our downtown area in the hope that we'll see more uh, development uh, there. Uh, we've increased some of the height requirements, allowing people to do some different things. But in our community, it's always been mostly local entrepreneurs who have taken that risk to open a restaurant or open a retail business and to uh, site it locally uh, and, and really capitalize on the connections that we have as a community and the support we have for one another. So. Um, you know, we do our own little thing in our own little town, but uh, you can't you can't be a, a robust economy without having a regional connection. So uh, it's valuable to be a part of this kind of a conversation uh, and to know that the transportation that connects us uh, is a key part of um, what we'll what we'll be talking about. Um, we invited Lori Edmonds in for a conversation about this, so we were happy to make that acquaintance too, and very happy that she is on board. And for the first time, we're going to look to hiring uh, our own uh, part-time economic development director, uh, doing that in kind of combination with tourism, which is another area we've put some effort into recently. Um, we don't have big staff in that area, but um, you know, if we make it a goal, we need to really have the staffing that can help provide it for us. Mayor Milch, I think in Gladstone, yes. yeah, you are. You are in a unique situation, I think, with, um, I mean, you kind of made the joke about being a suburb of Oregon City, but you are kind of <laughs> kind of mashed there in between, you know, Milwaukee and Oregon City. Um, do you see, um, you know, again, for just for the sake of conversation, industry in that area, or is that going to continue to be more of kind of those destination kind of businesses, like you said, the uh, entrepreneurs starting their small businesses and is, is Gladstone looking to lean into that a little bit more than the big, you know, warehouse or um, light industrial piece? Yeah, we certainly don't have uh, the empty land anywhere to do much of uh, the, the bigger industrial kind of projects that some of you others have talked about. Um, uh, but we do feel a, a strong connection regionally to the communities that we're close to. Uh, I know there's a group up in uh, uh, Oak Grove and Jennings Lodge that are talking about governance there and whether uh, they should become an incorporated city and that could change what happened there. Uh, and there was a long conversation among that community uh, for, um, you know, uh, for the area right around the Max station at Park Avenue. Uh, just south of, or the south end of Milwaukee. And, um, but, um, it, you know, no matter how it goes, as far as uh, what the citizens decide on, on local governance, whether they want to be a city, whether they want to annex to one of the other cities, uh, there is um, a lot of existing, um, you know, business and economy along there that tends to be uh, focused around um, automobiles, uh, automobile sales, service, repairs. Um, some might say, you know, more than is needed in one general area, but it certainly provides 
a certain amount of jobs and uh, that, that economy sector may change in the future. Uh, certainly the sales part seems to be changing. There's a lot more direct to consumer sales going on, um, you know, kind of, um, you know, pioneered by some of the electric car companies. You just plan what you want in your car and it gets delivered to you directly and you don't have to go to a, a showroom or a lot. Uh, so there's a lot of land currently being used for automobile sales that potentially could be used uh, in a different way. We have a lot of that uh, in Gladstone itself. We have 18 automobile dealerships within about a one mile span of uh, McLaughlin Boulevard, which is our name for uh, 99E going through us. Um, so, you know, in the future, we may see changes in the way the land is used and in the focus of the kinds of industries that we have here. Uh, but we're not gonna, certainly not gonna be putting in a, a semiconductor factory anytime soon uh, because we just don't have the land for it. Um, no, thank you for that answer. I appreciate it, sir. Um, Commissioner Savas, you have a couple of comments or questions? Yeah, well, I just, I was going to ask uh, Mayor Hodson himself a question, but I will, but I'll just, just stay with uh, Gladstone for a little bit in the conversation that Mayor Mills just shared. And that is that um, I think long range, kind of believe long range that are, because there's limited land opportunities, there are a few um, pockets of industrial zone properties along the McLaughlin 99E corridor, just north of Gladstone that are in the Oak Grove area. Um, uh, but there, I think there is opportunity in the future if there is a contraction in the automotive uh, retail industry, the dealership industry, there are some large um, um, areas of land. But the question is, are we more poised to, or is the market more poised to turn those into business opportunities, um, industrial, commercial, or is it more housing? And I, I, I think that there, that might be uh, um, uh, a discussion for another day uh, at the county level. Um, but I, I, I certainly think that that's something that has to be factored in. Um, otherwise, if we don't put enough jobs really in, in some of these highly urbanized areas, we're actually asking people and, and the suppliers to move their product and drive somewhere else, right? Um, Wilsonville, uh, um, most of the cities, Tualatin, a, a good majority of their population leaves the city every day to go to work. And is and Wilsonville, I believe, actually grows in population during the daytime because of employment, people coming to, to go to work. So if you think about all those people moving around, that commute shed is, is just overwhelmed with... Um, it overwhelms our transportation system. So I think having jobs uh, and opportunities in, in a number of industries is important that we make sure we spread that out and, as opposed to having it all centralized in, you know, Portland or, or Washington County and so forth. That we have our fair share. Um, so to that, Mayor Hodson, my question for you is, I understand that American Steel or some subsidiary or a company of, of uh, American Steel a sister company is expanding um, nearby or on a piece of land. Can you speak to that or do you know about that? Uh, I do um, and can. So um, as you stated, so yeah, American Steel um, built a pretty sizable, um, really it's kind of their steel finishing um, kind of plant out here. They, so they moved that out of Again, one, that's one of those Portland transplants. Um, and so there's been a talk a lot since they came here about trying to bring in, um, you know, supporting businesses. And I think that's been a lot of some of our focus as well. When we look at um, like Caruso Produce coming in, uh, which has been great, they've increased like their amount of produce that they're buying locally and bringing it in. So the the sister company uh, for American Steel, I'm drawing a, a blank on their name right now, but yeah, they're open and operational. They uh, moved quickly um, once they got through our approval process, um, which was a little a little bumpy for them. Um, but yeah, I mean, concrete tilt up building and that's, um, and they're already trucks coming in and out of there and, and whatnot. So that's been a big win um, to be able to get them. And then we have, um, uh, one, two, you know, we had two other businesses that, um, 
that have opened here probably or one for sure and then another one that'll be opening up late later this year that's finishing up construction so uh yeah it's been very active uh, on the steel on the building front but the steel piece has been great the nice thing about american steel their initial plant was just outside our urban renewal district and so um that was immediate um uh, you know, financial impact to the city, whereas now their sister company that's opened up uh, is in our urban renewal district, um, but it's still a, a financial win in that regards. Yeah, just want to add that, as I understand it, um, that the big reason they were able to locate out there was that they were near the rail spur, and that short line is bringing in the raw product, the steel, and had it not been for that rail, that, that short line and that spur, um, that they would not be able to expand. Yeah, the you know the, um, it was interesting because I mean that's always been a marketing piece for us has been the rail spur. Um, that short line right there, that family has been running that line for um, decades, and um, that was a big selling point to that. And as we look at the expansion of our industrial park, um, you know how do we leverage more of that that rail spur because that runs. I think it runs almost to Malala, if not further than that. And so that opens up quite a bit of uh, opportunity for growth along that, that line. Yep, thank you. Yep, good question. Thanks, Paul. Um, Mr. Myers. Thank you. Uh, just real quick, I've got a, a request and a, a, a question. First of all, since uh, following up on Mayor Milch and uh, Commissioner Savas's comments, I'm wondering, Laura, if I could ask that you make a specific point of reaching out to Oak Grove, the unincorporated, unincorporated but uh, urban area. I think that they may have some uh, comments similar to what the cities have made. So, and they don't have a specific seat here at C4. So that's my request. Uh, the rural areas are atomized. It's uh, it's timber and uh, uh, farming and uh, I, what I would call cottage industry. And I think probably the biggest issue that they have is uh, maintaining the secondary and tertiary roads adequate to get, get product in and out. But my question is how much, is this simply exclusively a, uh, an urban discussion or is there any rural aspect to, to what you're going to be doing? That's all I have, thank you. Martin, that's a great question. I mean, was that directed specifically at Laura in terms of her role on the county? Okay, thank you. I, I think to Laura or to the county, because yeah. I think the county obviously would be taking up that or also. Well, no, and I think it's a fair question. I mean, you know, um, we're it's interesting because, you know, as much as Canby has grown, so, right, so I'm almost 20 years in the city of Canby, and people joke about, not joke, it's serious, they're, they're, Canby's gotten, you know, too suburban for them and they're looking to move further out and they are looking at, you know, those areas that are much more rural and even, you know, moving to the outskirts of, uh, you know, Escada, the outskirts of Malala and are willing to drive um, to be able to get kind of out of out of the city. And it's funny to think of Canby being you know, a place to get out of um, based on the growth it's had. But yeah, I mean, I think it's a very real piece. Um, and we've talked about it before. And, and I mean, I know we've got, you know, Paul's here and, but we talk about the challenges of Clackamas County. It's the terrain. It, the, the landscape of Clackamas is challenging when you look at trying to carve out where do, where do we put these pockets of, of development, uh, business development? You know, and so, yeah, I think Martin, I think those areas are real areas that will see that. So, um, Laura, I'll let you answer Martin's question and comments first, and I'll come back to Commissioner Savas. Okay, happy to. Yeah, um, Martin, so yeah, we are reaching out to everybody that we can. And so I know we've been out to Molala. We met with Mac out there. I have Estacada next week. I'm doing a tour. I'm stopping by to see some visit um, businesses. Uh, we've been out to Happy Valley, Milwaukee, a number of cities. And so those that were missing, um, I think some of you like Canby, we've already been out to you know the fairgrounds talking about that and some of their projects. But looking to, uh, we've visited with uh, Lake Oswego, we haven't come out to see, um, I'm scheduled for Wilsonville, but yeah, happy to come out to visit anybody. So Martin, if you wanna 
type in your your contact information and in, to me in the <clears throat> chat chat box that'd be helpful then i could reach out to you directly it's and it's like, so, yeah i'm the i'm the rural rep the, the c4 rep okay. for the videos it's it's really um yeah. oak grove and i can get you their information contact information that'd be great okay and I can get that from Paul too, probably. Yeah, if there's anybody that wants to for us to visit, happy to do it because we're really taking a nice collaborative approach to making sure that we're supporting growth countywide. So we've already been introducing businesses like out in Molella, there's that site that Danson um, stepped away from. We had already brought in another uh, woods manufacturing company who's working with the city now, I hope still, I didn't know about the PGE issue, but that's that's good to know. Um, so this is hugely helpful. All the information you guys are sharing, I've just been frantically jotting notes because of some of the questions or concerns that have already been voiced to us, and some of this is new. So it's good to know, but we're becoming more and more aware of availability and opportunities. So we'll just kind of, we're looking at this as a big picture on what kind of businesses to target for the availability that you do have. So happy to reach out and talk to anybody that you wish. Thank you, Martin. Commissioner Savas. Yeah, just to build on the question and to build a little bit on what Laura just shared. Um, so from the rural standpoint, we've always had a focus on the entire county. And if we just look at about some of the basic industries, like you know whether it's metals or other things along those lines that are non-farm related, um, you know, though lumber is farm related to some degree. Uh, Malala has what inner four on the south side and has RSG on the on the north side. Um, so there's industry out there that spur that we talked about or that short line, not the same one, but but the same company um, runs their line all the way out there as well. I know that the spur, the, the original spur went farther in the Malala, but I believe that's shut down, but I don't know. There's probably possibly opportunity there if there was, if that was something that was sought out for um but also uh estacada in the park development there's no one here from estacada tonight but they have uh, that park development was empty during the uh, they built it and built it in phases and that's about filled up i couldn't believe how much development's taking place in that park development so virtually every piece of land there um 10 years ago that was virtually empty uh not very many takers is now full Sandy, I know, is growing. There's no one here from Sandy tonight, but Sandy's done quite a bit. And of course, we talked about Canby. Canby's done quite a bit out there. Um, probably, probably the biggest chunk, I think, of industrial of all the rural cities is, is taking place in that area out there. So tremendous amount of work. And if we can do some infill here and there in the along the, the Oak Grove areas or other areas along that, that's great. I think it's really about the market, what the market demands and what will take um you know what it'll absorb um if there is you know again a big auto dealership with a lot of land um but again there's so much pressure for housing i'm not sure how that how that would really go but all eyes on that but not to forget that one industry here um big in oregon is our is our ag industry uh we have a huge nursery industry which is spread around all over can be barlow um malala everywhere there there's a lot plus course Christmas tree farms and uh that's not nursery but Christmas tree farms and you know there are some specialty foods um uh herbs and barley and other operations that happen farming around around the uh, the Clackamas County so when we've looked in our economic development commission um for the 12 years I've been a commissioner we have looked at all of that and then some so we will continue to grow that and Maybe we can even dig up, Laura, possibly even the uh, the past. I think we had some, our, our economic development department had some um, just, uh, uh, sheets on all the different traded sectors and basically an informational sheet about all the different jobs and the gross, the gross income or the gross uh, net revenue off those um, gross product. So uh, there's a lot more to share. It's outdated, but I'm I'm really looking forward to what Laura can bring um, to our economic development um, uh, front. So um, hopefully we can, if we have opportunities, we want to be able to work together. And um, so this is great. And I'll just stop and see who else has comments. Thank you, sir. Mr. Cernak. Uh, in a, in addition to the transportation, I know. Um, some of the hamlet areas where they're up against urban growth boundaries 
one of the concerns is similar to the power uh, mentioned by Mayor Kaiser. Utilities can present an issue, um, especially like water and sewer, either because of topography or being near capacity. So that's not necessarily an immediate term, but maybe more of a uh, medium to long term concern for development. That's all I wanted to say. Okay, thanks, Kenny. So um, as you've all been, as we've all been talking, just kind of jotting down a few things, and I'm sure Trent has been as well. Um, you know, so kind of like what I heard is successes um, in many of your cities. Um, staff leadership has been a positive. Um, you know, I think. I'll, I'll use the team in Canby. Um, you know, we we've really gotten some good leadership. I mean, um, I'll brag on on Todd. You know, and his work with Canby Area Transit and the work he's been doing, and our planning team has been doing. And so, staff leadership, I think, I heard was a positive um, successes in terms of you know at least the conversations occurring about vertical housing. Um, I think that that's a, a reality. I think in some of the I think Happy Valleys, Lake Oswego's, I mean, even a little bit of hearing some of that maybe for Gladstone. So um, land for expansion. It sounds like a number of the cities were able to get some land and to and prepare for some expansion, which is good, uh, a success. And then um, I think both a success and a challenge is keeping workforce in your city or in your town so that you can attract those jobs, but that there's a place for um, for people that I mean have those jobs. So um, challenges I heard everyone or mentioned infrastructure was mentioned a couple of times, and that's water, power, sewer, um, material costs, and there those increases. I mean we're double digits on those costs increasing, um, and we're going to continue to see that I believe. Uh, transportation. Um, I think everyone mentioned that aspect. Um, and then uh, workforce. Um, and that's not just, it's the numbers, numbers. There's just not enough people out there in the workforce right now. And then training. I think uh, it might have been Valerie who brought up that you've got a bandwidth of workforce that's in that, you know, 40 to maybe 50, 60,000 range. And then you jump to over a hundred thousand. Um, where's that? Where's that middle ground? What are we missing from uh, a workforce development um, to fill that gap? Housing is a challenge. Um, Trent, I, what else did you catch? I think you did a really good job capturing the the big themes here. Uh, that's consistent with a lot of my notes. And I I think what's really interesting is even though all the challenges are the same or the opportunities are all the same, you each all have individual isolated needs. And so there's like a microcosm of what you're all working on and there's some uniform uh, items that you're all working on too. And, and depending on where there's uh, momentum or opportunities, like some of these things, like uh, it's, Sandy's not here, but I, I but uh, Commissioner Savage just mentioned boring and projects like C to C and Sunrise and those transportation corridors help not just Happy Valley, but Estacada and Sandy and the boring community and folks getting to the rural community and the nurseries that live over or that work over there and farm over there. So same thing with uh, you, Mayor Hodson and uh, and uh, Mayor Kaiser, those those state highways that go through the southern and southern eastern, you know, our southwestern parts of the county. Those are really big pieces that um, you know are, are critical to, to moving folks around. And, and it sounds like Industries and companies are looking for those to be dependable and predictable. So, um, yeah, I think there's a lot of consistency with what you're talking about. Transportation, I think, is a big theme here. And surprise, surprise, that's what C4 works on a lot. So um, there's maybe some opportunities to take this economic development conversation, have additional conversations about um, how y'all can work together, maybe to address some of these as a group. Well, Trent, and that's a perfect segue because we're a little over on time, and uh, I know that we're going to have uh, uh, Representative Bynum joining in here shortly. Um, but the big question that I, you know, the sort of group questions I'm going to ask this one of the group is, you know, our our charge 
um, as a group has always been transportation and housing slash land use. And it's great that Laura's here and I, it was a great time for sharing on the economic, economic development front, but that's not typically something that we've talked about as a group. Is this something that we want to evolve within this group? Do we want to lean into it much heavier than we have been? And um, how do we tie that to what our charge has always been? So I, I guess I'll leave it to you all to determine, tell, tell us, how do we move this forward? Do we move it forward? Thank you, Mr. Sherman. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, where where there's always a disconnect on our side is just, and I think where maybe there's the opportunity to explore and leverage this is just what what infrastructure funding mechanisms are out there. How do we access them? How do we how do we approach broad economic development, both, you know, as a as a macro perspective as well as at the micro level? And I think I do think, you know, you're, you're right. They all you know, while, while the themes are very consistent, they're all very kind of specific to the the, the different uh, jurisdictions as well. I mean, I think in, in Happy Valley, the example of uh, 212, Highway 212 and 172nd is our Rock Creek Industrial Area. We had a new uh, distribution center come in that we, we, we are going to be, they're going to be um, having trip caps mandated on how many trucks can come and go because that, that facility at that corner can't handle any growth. And for us to grow the area, we need uh, more workforce housing in the immediate area, which is going to put pressure on the transportation system. And then all kind of the momentum at the state level is not lanes, it's multimodal and non-car <laughs> infrastructure. And that's not what we need to grow industrial areas. So, uh, you know, sorry to preach to the choir here. But uh, so I think that all, all in all, we we are on if, if we have ways of exploring as a group, different ways, different mechanisms that we can um, find to, you know, provide the foundation to allow these areas to grow, I think that would be very helpful. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Commissioner Savas. Uh, real quick, and I see that Representative Bynum has just joined us, so we might just give her the floor, but the great segue here is that, um, to Councilor Sherman's point, um, the Sunrise Corridor unlocks, could unlock, it, when built, at least that next section, tremendous amount of acreage and opportunities, both housing, industrial, commercial, um, and it's it would be uh, just a, a great asset, and that's where we put a lot of our eggs in the, in the economic basket uh, for in the county for years. Well, we just haven't had the funding, um, and that project move forward. But we got phase one done. So I, without delay, um, Representative Bynum, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, the floor is yours. All right. Good evening, everyone. I'm fresh off another meeting, so um, thank you for having me here tonight. I was asked to talk a little bit about what I've learned as the um, the chair of kind of a revamped small business and economic development committee, and I have a few thoughts on that. the The first I would say is um, having some influence in shaping who gets on that committee is really important. I think we have actually a, a pretty rock star committee. We have Democrats and Republicans who are all business owners or have done economic development. And so the types of conversations that we're having are um, open, honest. Uh, they tend to run much differently from, for instance, from like our business and labor committee, which is uh, some people joke it's labor and labor, but um, it's just a, a different feel. So we're we're always trying to figure out how do we get to yes which I think is um, a business, kind of like how business people work. Uh, so that's one thing. I would say in terms of what the, the county and cities can do to be more effective in drawing down funds is really starting with a vision and being able to present that vision to the committee members in order to get the funding. It also includes legislator education so assuming that people understand this project, for instance, in Oregon City, 
without having visited that or without having understood the the parameters of it like we get a thousand people calling us you know a month and there's no way for you to know anything except through being educated so that's another point the third point i would share is having an emotional appeal so that kind of goes along with the vision so so it's not just about we can we can get 50 jobs out of this one site and we can build 30 homes it's not about that so much as it's i remember when i bought my first house and it was two blocks down from where my grandparents lived and how i was this young family moving into a community like those types of emotional appeals actually get the money as opposed to the very um which you need you need to have the concrete plans but you're selling a feeling and that that goes a long way and then finally it's it's hiring the right lobbyist and you guys uh, you know in Clackamas County we have really a really strong lobbying team but making sure that that investment is made in a good lobbying team in addition to having real people from the community so not just the commissioners or not just the elected officials but the guy who owns the local plumbing company um the kid who may have just come out of the community college program that knows how to weld and you know gets a job at this at one of these companies that you want to you know build out like those are the real appeals that actually work and um so in the committee we've tried to have a, a get to yes type of mentality We've also tried to make sure that we're doing what's called, I guess, the economic gardening, which is planting seeds that will, um, you know, bear fruit for many years to come. So we have a 20 to 40 year outlook on the types of things that we're approving. And then finally, I will say that um, just <laughs> for me, it's it's been interesting because our committee, we touch liquor marijuana <laughs> we don't touch gambling thank goodness um beer cider wine the arts and culture and small business and um this last session i think with just kind of the way the world is i have personally felt a need to try to bring more community together a, a need for me to kind of think about what i'm contributing to the world's vices and you know we've had some really tough conversations about liquor and alcohol and, and cannabis and whether we want to have tasting rooms and how does the government want to process profit off of people's vices so to speak if you call them that i'm, I'm just making a, a an umbrella type of statement but it really is um how do we structure tax policy? For instance, there's a proposal to ban uh, flavored cigarettes. So how do we balance um, moral policies with tax policies with keeping the black market out of our communities? So those are kind of the things that I've I've learned in terms of um, how to move forward in a, in a nutshell. And I'm happy to elaborate on some of the things that we're working on in terms of like industrial development, but I'll open it for questions now. Well, Representative Bynum, thank you so much for being here tonight and giving us that, that update. It's definitely a crucial committee that, um, that you are spearheading there, especially when we talk about um, yeah, some of the pieces that we need to be able to grow our economy here in uh, in Oregon. So we appreciate you leading the charge in that. Uh, questions from the group? I'll, I'll just jump in until I don't have a question. I just want to just thank Representative Bynum for her um, help with getting the uh, $4 million uh, for the Sunrise Corridor Gateway Project for exploring all the opportunities that she spoke of and then some. So um, thank you, thank you for that. And uh, Representative Bynum, could you just briefly? I know that there was the the boundaries changed a little bit. Could you describe where your boundaries of your district are today? I know you serve more you, all of Oregon, of course. And you're speaking <laughs> about all of Oregon and Clackamas mm -hmm. County, but if you just could just tell us where your boundaries are today. 
Right. So I, I just launched in and I only see a few people on the screen. Um, so the, for those of you that I haven't met before, um, just as a matter of a quick background, I'm trained as an electrical engineer, but my husband and I now own four McDonald's restaurants, thanks to September 11th. Um, this is home for him, but we moved back from the Detroit, Michigan area where I was a product engineer for General Motors. And um, we're in the McDonald's business. We have 250 employees or so. And so like small business is kind of what we, we eat and drink these days. Originally, my um, district included East Portland, North Clackamas, Happy Valley, Damascus, Gresham, Boring. It has since shifted to Happy Valley, Milwaukee, Oregon City, and unincorporated Clackamas County. So those are those are the borders. And then I chair the Small Business and Economic Development Committee. I was also the co-chair of the Joint Semiconductor Committee. And then I sit on the uh, Judiciary Committee as well, so. Great, thank you, Representative. Okay, no burning questions for Rep Representative Bynum. Oh, Brett, you're up, go for it. I've got to jump in, Rep Bynum, thank you so much. It's always nice to see you and, uh, and you know, being right in your neighborhood, thank you so much for all of the things you do for the city and for the region. It's, it's you know, for, for all of you in Salem, um, we know there's a lot of time and effort spent for a lot of really complicated things and more bills than anybody could read in a lifetime go across your desk um, every week. So it, it is greatly appreciated. So I think my question really is more about, you know, Happy Valley, we, um, we have uh, exposure to, you know, uh, a little ro robust medical industry here in the area. Um, and then a lot of, you know, retail, commercial service. We've seen a, a, a pretty big growth spurt in um, like assisted living. So that's kind of tied to medical as well. And I think one of the things that we've explored here is, you know, how do we, how do we get the foot in the door to attract that new industry, that new business? And, you know, for us, it, it does come down to transportation in the Rock Creek industrial area. That has been a uh, hindrance to attracting some of the larger businesses. But I know that looking at things like semiconductors and some of the other industries, you know, any thoughts on kind of how we can start that ball rolling? Is it about kind of working with uh, GPI and some of the broader groups here? Is it more kind of tying it together with some of our local jurisdictions where we can kind of leverage unincorporated Clackamas County and some of the other areas? Any, any words of wisdom for me tonight? So I will tell you that the energy that we have in the, in the legislature um, around semiconductors and all that it has brought is due to a call I got from GPI and a conversation. She was like, uh, this is um, Monique, I think is the executive director. And she said, I'm having a hard time landing these companies. What do I do? And I was like, oh, you just need to get legislators to start getting engaged and writing letters for you. And um, so I think it's, of course, yes, using GPI, but it really is starting with a vision for what you want to build. And some of it is chicken and egg. I, I will give you that. Um, I, I think that for the Happy Valley area, um, you know, talking about things that aren't hard on our, on our environment, things that keep people in the city rather than having to utilize transportation corridors as effectively as, as, as much as we, um, currently do now. Um, and then, you know, I think what is a competitive advantage for the city is that it is easy to do business in the city. I have a business in Portland. It is not easy to do business in Portland, right? So that is a competitive advantage. One thing I will also say is every time I go into the city of Portland and I intentionally go into the city of Portland on Fridays because I believe that our flagship city cannot die. Um, but when I go in, there's a big McMinnville poster on the brick wall coming off of the, somebody help me out, some bridge, uh, Morrison Bridge, I think it is. I remember that it's been there for maybe a couple of months. She's not playing, but I've never seen a Happy Valley poster anywhere in the city that says, come live here, work here, grow your business here. 
And so that's the kind of intentionality that like emotional appeal, even if there's nothing here, it's like that kind of emotional appeal that that really starts to sell a city and, and bring in people that have um, maybe more vision than we do. I, I appreciate that. We had we had explored um, hiring a muralist to come out and, and you know, start preparing things like that. We're also uh, very actively exploring tourism in the area. You know, we have uh, a waterfront property now on the clack in the server that's going to be park and commercial. Uh, we're looking at the potential for lodging there as well. We have uh, what could be the where the current um, uh, Pickathon concert happens every year on the Pendarvis Farm. We're looking at potentially trying to tie that into our new downtown and making a permanent music venue out of it, permanent park out of it. Um, so we'll uh, we'll be leaning on you <laughs> over time, but uh, appreciate all you do. Yeah, Independence has really done a good job too. I'm sure everybody's been there, but they they've done a kick-ass job, you know. And I think the appeal for them is that it's a small town. And when I went there, I, I really appreciated getting out of the big city and going to the small towns. Looks like Michael has a question. Thank you. Yes, Representative, um, I appreciate what you had to say about Portland as sort of the flagship city. Uh, but, um, you know, and in and, and Clackamas, probably we're more likely to kick Portland when they're down than maybe other areas. Uh, traditionally, we've kind of looked at it as, you know, this, this, the devil. Uh, but um, how can we, uh, one of my hopes with this newly formed subcommittee on transportation that takes us out of the poll, uh, the tolling conversation is that maybe for the next three years, we can really look mm -hmm. at um, more geographic diversification of our economy across the state. Uh, in, in an area surrounded by an urban growth boundary, sometimes the focus is on the hub which is uh, you know, Portland and, and the wheel, which is the edges, all the talk about Hillsborough and, and some of those communities, but the spokes sort of get left out of the conversation. And I think if more of the economy was distributed among the spokes and in the middle of the wheel, uh, we would have less need for uh, use of those freeways to commute to jobs. Uh, we want more local jobs. We want people to be able to live where they work uh, or not too far from where they, where they live. Um, and uh, how can how can we uh, maybe pull some of that uh, uh, that business eco economy away from Portland without damaging Portland, but still strengthen uh, our our community as a whole? Yeah, I think I think what you bring up is a good point. Um, it's not about like damaging the city, but it really is about growing the economy so people can live and work in their own communities. Um, and enjoy the things that the big city offers. But um, one one legislator mentioned the other day that the in the context of the bridge, you know, this I five billion dollar project, the bridge, she said, I want you all to think about the fact that the reason we have so much traffic back and forth across the bridge is because of tax policy. So there are things that we can do that don't necessarily involve money, but just rethinking the way that we build cities, rethinking the way that we do tax structure, rethinking the way that we build housing um, and, and incentivize jobs that can make more of a difference than spending a billion dollars on the bridge. So I think, I think you're onto something. One more thought. Uh, I was at dinner this evening and, and a person talked about, um, I don't know if any of you have ever been to France, but they said that there's tolls around cities in France, but they're not imposed on the people that need to go to the grocery store every day. So they've structured their tolls and their road um, payment system such that it's not affecting the local community as much as people who are actually coming in and out of the community. And so I think that that, um, he said, take a look at the way France does their uh, road um, funding and we might get some ideas from that. So maybe a, a trip to France is in our, our future. Great questions and dialogue. Again, um, Representative Bynum, thank you for carving out some time for us in your schedule this evening. We really appreciate it. and. Uh, um, I'm sure there'll be more to come uh, as the session goes on and when you finish. So we'll, we will have you back. Sure thing. I'll drop my um, cell phone in the comments and anybody at any time. Like I said, I go into the city on Fridays. So if you want to do lunch, 
happy to do that, but I'm also happy to stay in Clackamas on Saturdays and Sundays. Perfect. Well, thank you. All right, group. Um, great conversation this evening. Um, we're going to need to kind of go maybe a little rapid fire here to get us uh, wrapped up. Um, Trent is included in your packets, the final agenda and or for conversation, Trent, or we need to approve it. Yes, that would be super helpful. <clears throat> it's your retreat after all. And this year it's going to be in Welch's, but it sounds like next year it could be in France. Just depends on how this year goes. So we'll 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 test on that one. But um part of the work tonight is to yes, get get the agenda approved and make sure that we are having the retreat that you want to have. But also that if we're having the retreat that you want to have, I need y'all to register for the retreat. We need more people to register for the retreat. It can't just be the members. It needs to be your alternates as well. Please invite your council. Uh, here's the situation that I'm in. Uh, on Monday, <clears throat> for the folks that I don't have who haven't like registered for a room, the hotel takes those rooms back for the ones that are not registered yet. So I have up to 35 rooms held. I think I have about 20 people booked in a room. So we got more space. After Monday, you can still register for the retreat. Anybody can still register for the retreat and anyone's welcome to come. It just might become harder to get you into a room after Monday. So please, please, please register. I'm going to send out a reminder tonight after the, the meeting that's specific to this. So you have the registration form um, and just give me the form. I mean, the, as long as the money's coming, that's fine. But give me the form and let me know that you want to stay overnight. That's the really big deal here because this is the retreat. Y'all have been asking to meet in person. Y'all have been asking to have a retreat. I can't stress it enough. I need y'all to register for the retreat. <laughs> so it's got a pencil financially as well. And so that's a that's a big a big piece of this. And we're meeting with the executive committee on Monday to, to talk through uh, any any additional items that y'all want to cover here. But is this agenda the way it's set up? The conversation that you want to have. So switching here a little bit uh, in my mode. Day one is specific to housing. And I can sort of walk through how we built this session real quick. Um, we wanted to make sure that y'all are having a conversation that's that's moving your discussions forward and setting you up for future conversations throughout the rest of the year. So opening up with the conversation about affordable housing and homeless services, sort of a SWAT discussion, um, strength, weakness, opportunity test. This is a discussion amongst yourselves. What's working well? What's not working well? It's kind of like what you did with the economic development conversation, putting stuff all over the map so that y'all have some context for the different needs throughout the county. Um, providing y'all some information with session two and session three, probably bringing in a panel and some information folks to talk about the supportive housing service program, what's available here for y'all um, as cities, what sort of resources y'all have to do the sticks and bricks pieces too, and then sort of bringing it down uh, into like the more action item -y type stuff, but still in the goals and visioning work is what do y'all want to accomplish as a county, as a group in, in the housing arena. And so I know that there's a lot of movement right now around the county about what are those effective ways to do housing. Uh, this conversation today will, uh, or at the, at the retreat will be sticks and bricks and supportive services. Um, we could possibly talk about some of the other momentum as well about um, substance abuse disorder. I mean, I know there's momentum all over the place for this conversation specifically, it'll be sticks and bricks and, um, and supportive services. So kind of sticking to just some very focused themes about what y'all have been covering and what y'all have asked about covering. That's that's the uh, that's the Friday afternoon session, and then the Saturday session is tolling and the and the upcoming year ahead and two years ahead probably and decades ahead as well of, of tolling that's probably coming our way. So getting a quick update on what we know. All right, when you wake up with your eggs and bacon, of course, uh, with what's going on with the Oregon toll program. So we can talk about that in just a minute. Moving into more legislative updates on I-205 and tolling, and we can give you some of the late breaking stuff here right now. And then where do you go from here? You know, what does your next couple of months to year look like? Because I think we're going to learn a lot in the next four weeks, and then we're going to learn more in the next four weeks after that. So there's a lot coming. I think there's a lot to huddle on and talk about and doing that in a room together um, but will be great. And doing it with your whole councils so that you're all hearing it at the same time would be good, too. So that's my uh, that's my pitch here. Uh, tell me if this is the agenda you want to have for uh, your June two and June three retreat. Uh, Trent, thank you for uh, that breakdown and whatnot. Um, 
two a question and a, and a comment. The first question is is we're looking at the um, some of the affordable housing services that um, do we have guest speakers lined up or um, experts to come and kind of expand on that and, and where I guess I'm looking at is um, a couple of years ago at um, the Oregon Mayor's Association um, meeting, um, I know that we uh, had um, builders come and present and talk about the things that they were doing as builders to help, I guess, create um, and improve the mix of what is affordable or workforce housing. And mm. I mean, again, when we were earlier talking, like, what does that look like um, in our more urban settings? Like, is that even a, a, a pipe dream? Um, I mean, we can't have appreciate the county's effort but when it's costing $250,000, $300,000 a door. Um, you know, that's cost prohibitive. I mean, there, that, that doesn't make, I mean, that's heavily subsidizing housing to reach our goal, which is, um, that is not sustainable. So I, I don't know if that's even a possibility to have that be at this retreat at this point. Absolutely it is. Um, and so we are thinking in that direction already. It, it's good to hear from, you know, the development community, what, what helps them be successful. We have developers here within the housing authority about what types of tools and resources they need to build sticks and bricks. Um, you know, we have one of the largest affordable housing retrofits about to happen in the city of Milwaukee uh, with the Hillside Master Plan redevelopment, where we're taking 100 of the state's oldest affordable housing public units and turning it into 500 units, of which like 375 of those units are going to be uh, at medium income or below. And so it's that's a huge transition that's happening here in Clackamas County. So like, what did Milwaukee do to help us get there? What did the housing authority do to get there? What tools and resources are available? Like we're thinking in that direction or other developers, as you're talking about Mayor Hudson, what, what can they, what are they looking for when they're trying to say, I want to do, I want to do a building. I want it to be four stories and you want it to be, you know, mixed income or mixed use and things like that. So like, what are they looking for to have those conversations? I think that's the conversation you're looking to have. We can set something like that up. No, oh, that'd be great. I mean, and then my comment was, um that this agenda looks uh, for me looks great i think it's hitting on the points that we've all been talking about for the past year um to um to have it as conversation pieces and i am registered and i believe i've asked to reserve a room so all y'all that haven't registered yet i'll back trend up and say get registered commissioner Slavis. yeah i just want to add um to Mayor Hotz's original question, what, what can you all do to help prepare? And I made this plea before, and I'll make it again today. Um, and that is that if you can maybe ask your city manager what, what land or lands or properties might have some potential for housing, or what does the city might own or, or know of that might be a ideal place for housing, uh, it has to start with somewhere, right? And I think that's the key. Uh, this afternoon, I, I, I took uh, Commissioner West for a tour of some properties that we've talked about that he never saw. And his eyes grew like baseballs. And he was, there he goes, thumbs up. He had no idea until you see what's out there, what the potential really is. And I, I did want to take him into Milwaukee and show him the hillside project that uh, Trent just mentioned. But I promised him that we'll, we're going to do that and also Oregon City Manor and some other properties the county owns, but um, a lot of potential when we actually talk about sites. So if you have something um, to that the city might consider, um, please, please uh, come with something. If you if you could ask again your city manager what might be out there that you're not aware of. And, and Commissioner West heard of some of these things, but until he saw him, saw them, did he really get excited? So um, just throwing that out there. Great. So, uh, yes, Councilor Barry. Um, so I I agree. The um, agenda looks really good to me too. I really like it when we have some substantial um, 
you know, some real good stuff to take away with. Uh, on the tolling issues, uh, we had a discussion down in Charbonneau with Representative Neron and Senator Woods a couple of weeks ago. There were 350 people in the audience and wow. they were talking about options to tolling. And I would love to have some discussion on that. I don't think tolling has to, I know we have to raise funds, but there could be different ways of raising funds. I'd really like to have a discussion that explores those options. One option would be raising um, registration fees for vehicles. So if we could add that to the agenda, I'd really appreciate it. Excellent, uh, Councilor Barry. I, I agree with you. There are options, um, and it'd be good to have that conversation um, at the retreat. So, thank you for that, uh, Councilor Pratt. Uh, two really quick things. First, um, I've been instructed that I can't use the word homeless anymore, and you have to use houseless. Just mentioning that. I'm not sure if it matters to this group, but I will mention it. And um, I'm just wondering for those of us who can't make it, if this will be recorded or if there's a way for us to um, get at least a transcript of what was discussed. So we don't record it. Um, it's really hard to create a recording of this, of a meeting like this because it's in a conference room, but everything that everybody says basically goes on a giant sticky note. And then we create all of what we've done in the past and it's been a few years. Um, due to the pandemic, but what we've done in the past is transcribe a lot of that uh, into a note page that then gets sort of approved or affirmed uh, at a following meeting by C4. Uh, because the last session of the of the retreat is sort of a goal setting session for C4. Like what from the retreat do you want to prioritize and how and when do you want to prioritize those those topics moving forward? And it can be these two topics or it can be other topics as well like economic development, for example. But I think there's a good Venn diagram of how a lot of this stuff starts working together. All right. Based on all that, I think we've got good tweaks to make and the executive committee will talk more about that on Monday to get this finalized and move forward. Um, all right. Um, updates on I-205. I know that we've got a big pause that was put out um, in the last day or so. Is there much to talk about that right now, Trent and Commissioner Savas? I can give a quick update briefly and I see Commission, or Commissioner West's hand up, so I don't want to, I can defer to him in just a moment, of course, but uh, obviously the big note is the pause and I'll, I'll just say that a lot of information is still coming out about it and I just put into the uh, chat, if you haven't seen it, the governor's letter that came out today. Uh, which is super helpful. There are some dates in there and some clarifications that she provides in this letter about what to expect in the coming couple of years and the coming couple of months. So really big pieces to be thinking about. And if you're probably all talking about it already and thinking about some of these things, but some of the stuff we're talking about here at the county is number one, this is a pause on the collection of tolls. Um, and so I think that that's a really big um, key piece of language, but which probably means that a lot of the work on tolling may still be continuing in the meantime. So NEPA and the EA, and great job, everybody, getting your comments in uh, last month. That was epic, an epic show of force. And we have put most of those letters on a county website about tolling. So I'm going to put a link to that county website so you have it uh, here in the chat in just a moment. And I'm also going to include the county's press release, which just went out today as well. Uh, so you all have those as well. I think it's actually in the same link, but uh, we'll get that information here for you to have it. And if your city's comments are not in there, send them to us so we can we can include it. But um, some of the big pieces are that that pause on tolling means the work will continue on tolling, but it also means that some of the work is disrupted on tolling. And so in the governor's letter, she asked for a new financial plan. Uh, by ODOT, which has to be delivered to her desk on like July 1. So that's super fast. It's two months to pivot on three or four major billion dollar projects, basically. That's going to be interesting to watch. But what is encouraging to Trent is one thing that this group and the county has been asking for for a long time is a version of the financial plan. So we know that something's going to be created and delivered publicly. And uh, that maybe could be requested, hopefully, without a public records request. So I think that's an interesting piece of information that we've been begging for 
as a group for a long time. So it will be really good to see that information in the coming month and a half. And then uh, ODOT needs to report to, um, I think, the governor and the, and the legislature here at the end of the year uh, on some of the updates and, and new planning moving forward. So there's pieces of work that ODOT has to do. Uh, the subcommittee is going to be co come into place. And I put into the chat earlier who's in that subcommittee. It's legislators only presently. Uh, Councilor Lewis is not in there, but that would have been really fun. Uh, but there is some commitments by some legislators on that committee to see local involvement and local engagement. And we saw that in some of the press releases earlier, that there is a desire for local voices to be shared at these committees. Um, so that is something that I think we'll need to continue working on. The pause uh, does not mean we need to slow down on our work. It means that we need to stay diligent with our work. Um, and more of that will, will come to fruition. And we can talk about more of that at the retreat. Uh, but I know y'all are catching the news at the same time as everybody else. I just wanted to share some of the questions we've been talking about. And then I see that hand, Commissioner West, and then Commissioner Savas. Uh, I'll just piggyback on what you said, Trent. Will, will, thank you for that concise explanation. I think that just take a second to realize what local gov the, the when we come together as local governments, the ability that we have um to really do meaningful work together i i firmly believe that this would not have happened if it wasn't for the the ea work and then the work of our these uh, the local cities in clackamas county to put forth a really technical strategic thoughtful professional response back in the way and, and to push back in the way that we did um great job everybody and so that still continues i know in the county from from the county's point of view when when we address nepa we're still going to go forward um with um looking to do um and the eis and then taking additional action as necessary i think that we were really the spearhead as a local collective of local governments in really causing the legislature to take action um, and galvanizing and giving what the legislature needed um, to be able to, to, to help advocate um, for a better response from ODOT. So, so I think we did great work. The other thing I think we want to keep pushing as local influencers too, like we all have quite a bit of an influence in our local communities. And one of the things that we need to maybe start helping get some traction is um, IP4. IP4 allows voters to vote in Clackamas County on whether or not they want to be told. Um, and that is another avenue that I think we might want to look at continuing to promote. Um, but uh, Trent, you said most of it there, but that I think we still continue to stay in our lane. We don't let take the foot off the gas. This is just like a temporary pause as they continue to implement tolling, um, as Trent said. Um, but yeah, I guess, and, and as a county, I, I know the Board of County Commissioner is very, very committed to um, making the fight this, um, our top priority. jump in real fast here. Um, I really appreciate what Councillor Barry um, had mentioned about funding, other funding options and so forth. So I think we need to be mindful that I think we're all going to be expected to proffer some funding solutions um, as gas tax revenues drop and all these big projects come online. There needs to be, practically speaking, there has to be, you know, a funding mechanism. And I look forward to that conversation um, at the retreat. But just want to plant one seed is that, um, you know, there are tolling mechanisms and there are funding mechanisms that are not tolling that do not create diversion. So to the, to the tolling mechanisms out there that don't create diversion, ODOT said no to. Um, so we need to be mindful that there are solutions out there, including tolling, not including tolling, that don't cause diversion. And that's our big issue that we have in Clackamas County. Um, is giving people an option um, that doesn't get there. So anyhow, that, that's the kind of conversation I want to, I want to see us have. Um, I'd love to elaborate on this tonight, but we simply don't have the time. But again, big shout out to, to everyone for their efforts, um, staff and, um, and cities and CPOs and citizens that all, you know, all help with this. Uh, you all made a big impact. So we're grateful. All right. Um, great. Try anything more on that? Okay. Um, rapid fire, here we go. JPAC, any updates? Councilor Lewis, can you help? 
Going once, going twice. Okay. Uh, MPAC updates. Going once. Go. Councilor Sherman, go for it. I can jump on that. Um, pretty much the uh, the big the big updated MPAC was uh, review of the 2040 planning development grants um, and uh, and where that was going uh, moving forward. And then really the big one was uh, and actually this was a uh, JPAC as well. It was uh, the regional transportation plan uh, analysis. There are you know pages and pages and pages of project projects to go through. So they've got those aligned. And uh, Metro staff is in the process of going through their second kind of uh, system level uh, evaluation of that that list. So I expect that that will be a an ongoing process for a uh, for a, a later date. That's all I've got. All right, Groovy. Climate Action Plan Task Force update. I can help while uh, Councillor Pratt looks for her uh, speaker button. I have a little note from our staff and that this the advisory task force held its twelfth and final meeting in April. This group of community representatives did a great job of sharing their diverse perspectives and knowledge, which will be reflected in the final product documents or project documents. The project team and staff and consultants are finalizing the climate action plan now, implementation plan and the climate lens, and a final report is expected to be sent to the Board of Commissioners in June. And so that's the quick summary. Councillor Pratt, would you add anything? No, you summarized it, and I think um, Councillor Sacco um, kind of gave a summary of our last meeting, and there were still a lot of concerns of where it was at, but um, I don't know that there will be any future meetings to discuss it. It looks like it's moving on without the committee having further input. All right, thank you both. Uh, any other business? Seeing none, take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you, Commissioner. Second. Second, Second by Sherman, thank you. Ah. Anyone? All right. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Good night, everyone. Thank you very much for the time.